My name is George Webster uh, and I'm here for Addiction Convention. Okay, fight. There was a battle sequence between me and and Louis um, in episode seven of season two, um, where we don't actually fight, but our armies do. And then Louis, George Blackton does charge in and gets a bit muddy, uh, while I'm just kind of hanging back, sending my, my dudes in um, to fight for me. You know, Rima Vorange, very, very careful man, decided to just chill at the chill at the front line and send in his little fighters. Wig! <laughs> okay, I have no memories of wigs because I didn't wear one. I was one of the very rare people, I think, on set. I, my hair was down here anyway, um, which hair and makeup were very, very happy with. They were like, ah, oh, my wig, it's fine. But they did curl it. Um, but that, that also, when you get a call time as that to your, your morning slot to come in, uh, mine was a lot later than everybody else's because so they didn't need to glue on hair. And also the D rig at the end of the day when I'm just going home. I get to go home because they're all stuck in the trailer for an extra 20 minutes. Not me. So no wig. No wig for me. Outfit. Outfit. Okay, so my outfit. So I play William of Orange and costume decided, well, if we're going to put him in any colour, we'll put him in orange. And they did. They got orange in as many things as they could. Um, so my outfit was predominantly orange. I remember there was a cloak in season one that had like, fo like a real fox fur on it. Orange. Um, and yeah, I also remember the shoes. It was the first one worn shoes of that period. And they, you had to kind of learn to walk again in them. Um, but eventually, they, such a solid heel that you could just kind of twist on them in a really passive aggressive way. Um, so yeah, that's what I remember about <laughs> the outfit. Food. <laughs> Food. Okay. This is a two-part answer. One of my big scenes with Louis was we were having dinner. Um, so there was ham, there was cheese, there was bread. And I learned very early on in acting that if you ever have a scene that's got food in it, don't eat anything. And I've developed my own technique where I can bring a fork or some food up to my mouth, but it never quite goes in. It's like, uh, uh. Even if I'm saying nothing at the dinner table, you, it, look for me in a scene, you'll see me like tearing bread into tiny little pieces. Uh. Just by the end of it, you'll be absolutely <laughs> full. Um, but also the food on set was, I've never seen anything like how the French have lunch on a film set. It's, it was glorious. There was like lobster there, I'm sure. And it goes on for about two hours and there's wine and it's just the best. I still tell people about it today. That's the food. French. French. Well, my the language I'm not so good at. I mean, I've got a diction convention. Okay. That sounds that sounds good, right? <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure to s spend time over here. Like, obviously, being so close to England, I've been, I've been over here a couple of times for like family holidays and stuff. But to come work over here and, and meet and work with with French crews and French cast. It's been amazing. It's been really kind of special to... I think when you work in a country, you feel a kind of immediate special bond with it. Um, again, because you're, you're working among the people, do you know what I mean? You're sort of on their schedule and, and that really, really means a lot. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to travel a lot more of it. I love French history. I'm like deep into the Templars and, and all that. So yeah, I, I hope to spend a lot more time in France, which is where French reside. Laugh. <laughs> Is that it? Is that that's the answer? I have a vague memory of George Blagden crashing his... He has a drone and there's a shot in our episode that he actually filmed from his drone. This was back in the day when drones were still quite hard to come by but um, George told me a story about how he actually crashed his into a lake and I laughed for a good five minutes because he loved that thing more than anything. Um, so yeah, that was that was my laugh memory, I suppose. Chair! Chair. 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 I like that. This is a kind of chair. 
is on the horse that I sat on. It's a saddle. What is a saddle but a horse chair? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a horse rider, but they put me on possibly the biggest horse in France to, to do a, a couple of scenes on. I sat on that horse chair, chair, um, and was very well taken care of. Yeah, that's my, that's my chair memory. Horse! Oh, I've already done the horse. Um, so, the horse that they put me on, the biggest in the land, but also the best trained horse. This horse knew that I didn't know how to be on it, but he was fine. And they could literally be like, go and stand on that 10 pp, and they'd be like, yeah, right. And he'd, he'd hit his mark every time. Um, I felt very safe on this. I wish I could remember this horse's name. It feels very disrespectful of me to not know. Um, but it's I, it's the first and only time I've been on a horse on on set. It's also one of those things that when you're a little boy, you dream of being an actor. You imagine yourself on a horse, like leading an army. And so when I got to sit on a horse, trot three steps, and say something like, "Now's the time," so in the war um, was. I had to pinch myself. I was like, this is the coolest fucking job of all time. So yeah, a good, that was a good horse memory. Ah, Versailles. I've never been to actual Versailles, um, but the, the show and the, the name of the place and the spirit of it feels a part of me forever. So I will definitely visit Versailles someday. Um, and yeah, it's a very, very special show. And I, I, I hope in some way, in some time, we get to do something in that universe again. And I think the way that TV's going, maybe that could be on the cards. Um, yeah, really special fan base, really special cast and crew, and long may it rain, Versailles.